I have some more questions that are kind of sent around decentralization, actually, that have popped up. Uh, first one is, Amanda, I saw that Galaxy has been putting out some research on the upgrade to the Stratum protocol. Yeah. Um, I would love for you to just to summarize what it is for our listeners and then oh, man. That talk is a about, tough one. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's basically a, like a messaging protocol, right? That miners. Yeah. So I can, I can give some like general background, right. Okay. But we'd need Rachel here to dive into like the real technical. Yes, just some general background. And then um, if you want to, we can talk about maybe some of the downsides and uh, better hash, you know, which is a, a kind of alternative proposal for to stratum, which would mitigate some certain attack vectors that stratum has. Yeah, so um, better hashes is, is folded into a lot of Stratum V2, awesome. as I understand it, which is great. Um, I know, you know, Macarello really led the way with that. Um, and I think it's really important. If we think about um, Bitcoin and, and what has happened with hash rate over the past, like, you know, 13 years, there was, you know, Stratum V1 came out um, as a protocol when Bitcoin hash rate was really low. And we really needed a new upgraded protocol about like four years ago. Um, but we're still using stratum v1 so i think that that's like a one thing that is like we're, we're far beyond the point of us like needing something new um and i love that we're working on it right so rachel who's on um, the mining team she de dedicates a lot of her time to open source development which like is not really i don't think talked about right like galaxy does a lot of different things but we also have a person dedicated to open source development on bitcoin which you know is is like a fascinating topic to think about when you think about large companies right um now trying to think about what they need and and how they can support like the protocols um but stratum v2 will allow for um, more flexibility for miners. So one thing that I think is really cool that doesn't exist today is right now when you um, when a block is assembled, that block is assembled by the pool versus the individual miner. So they select what transactions go inside the block. Um, with Stratum V2, you would be able to select the transactions that go inside the block. And I think that that's something that's you know really cool um, and, and new. So you know, over time, that could be used in good ways or bad ways. So for example, if you are a large company, right, that say you're a custodian, that you want to be able to prioritize your clients' transactions over somebody else, like you technically could do that in Stratum V2. And it's not against the rules, right? But it is something that we'll, we'll see, like, you know, with all technology, when it continues to increase, like good things and bad things might come out of it. Yeah, that, that's a really important point. Um, that and that's cool. That was the main idea behind Better Hash, and so I didn't know that that main idea was like folded into Stratum V2. So it does. There's this idea of centralization of, of choosing what transactions go into a block in a pool with Stratum V1. And historically speaking, all the transactions were chosen by one node that represented that pool, as far as I understand it. With with V2, then the individual miners. So if I have a few ASICs and I happen to discover that block, then I, uh, my node gets to decide with its you know, block template which transactions go into the block. Uh, so that does decentralize that decision making a little bit, which is cool. I also, you know, one thing that's kind of interesting is there's a few people working on Stratum V2. Um, so there's, you know, the adoption that Slashpool has created where they individually put Stratum V2 on miners. And then there is this other body of work and Rachel breaks this all down in, in, in the, um, in the long um the long blog post um there's you know a group with bitmax square and galaxy that are also working on stratum v2 right so i i think one of the other pieces that i, I thought was kind of fascinating when you're thinking about protocol upgrades is just like the relationship between miners and devs and users um, and that's, you know, something that she breaks down. So I, I would encourage anyone interested in Stratum V2 to really take a, a look at it. She um, goes through all of the different pieces of it, which is like a really in-depth look of like the differences of Stratum V1 and V2 and like what V2 will do differently. Yeah, it's, just, it's absolutely fantastic yep. report, like almost every that uh, Galaxy publishes. So if you, if you know nothing about Stratum V2 and if you want to get a history lesson and deep technical and high level explanation uh definitely read the report um i i, I definitely learned a, a lot about it myself and Same. i would just add to that it, it does from what i learned from the report itself it does bring uh, uh also some benefits on a technical level from its more efficient protocol that's more optimized for the you know large-scale operations that we have today 
um, it does bring some security benefits. And, and you know, if we, if we look at giving power to the users or individual miners to construct their own blocks, I think that's very positive thing, right? And it further goes along, uh, you know, it decentralizes further the power, um, however you define that power, which aspect of that power you look at the Bitcoin network. And certainly as, as the largest pool on the network, we are, we, we know that we as a pool would also play a big part of, of um, you know, um, putting Stratum V2 into, into mainstream or into production. And so we, we as Foundry are, it's very v well aligned with our values around decentralization. So we would definitely be pushing it um, to any, any users that want to be constructing their own, uh, their, their own blocks uh, or block templates. And, um, and obviously there's also a reliance on firmware of manufacturers to, uh, to adopt it. So there's another kind of component where uh, you would need to see, you would need to see a push. What's the other thing that we are looking from, from a perspective of a pool operator in Stratum V2, there are certain things that we have to consider um, uh, certain then dynamic that potentially changes when you do give a miner ability to construct their own block. And, and it is an edge case. It is a case, for example, let's say a miner is mining empty blocks or let's say a miner themselves is not fully optimizing the uh, transactions that are bringing the most revenue. Well, that revenue, at least in the FPPS pool, is the foregone revenue for the pool operator, right? And so if the pool operator is committing to pay certain amount of Bitcoin um, out to the miners, no matter what blocks are fine, you're definitely hurt if then the blocks that you do end up mining are not maximizing that revenue. Right, so that's that's a, uh, one example of a component that we would need to look into and find a solution to um, uh, before uh, fully adopting. But nonetheless, none of these issues are unsolvable, and and I'm sure when the Stratum V2 is live, that we would be making a big push for it. You know, one thing that we really, really wanted was Stratum V2 to be put on, like if we firmware on an ASIC, right? Let's start there. Is kind of interesting because it's closed sourced, so you don't really you have to ask like the manufacturers for certain things like if you want to update something and then you also like completely give away your warranty right if it's a new machine so one thing that would be really cool and um we've we've started these conversations is like if we were to write stratum v2 code that could work can a manufacturer just like instantly put it on right the machine so stratum v2 is then on every single mining machine that you purchase like now and in the future and I think that that would really like help with adoption. Um, but, you know, there's no incentive for the manufacturers to really do that other than like users saying like, I want it. Um, and I don't think that we're there yet with Stratum V2. So I think that it's a long way coming. I also think that if we're being realistic, we're probably like two to three years out of Stratum V2 like actually being operable. That's what I love about Bitcoin devs. They take their time. Get everything tested and treat it like right. nuclear power plant <laughs> operating systems or something. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think a lot of people don't realize that there's this separate protocol that's outside of the Bitcoin protocol that miners use to speak to each other, you know, to broadcast the discovery of blocks in fractions of a second around the world uh, to minimize, you know, orphaned blocks, et cetera. There's, so there's a whole other world there that's really interesting to explore if you haven't yet about how uh, the, the stratum protocol and just how Bitcoin miners talk to each other and solve some of the problems that um, the Bitcoin protocol itself may have uh, presented.